Welcome, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today. My name is Dan Souls. I'm Vice President of Syndication and Premium Service for American Public Television. We're here at American Public Television headquarters in Boston, and we're very fortunate to be joined across the pond by Paul Marquez and Kieran McMiniman. Paul is a co-creator of Hope Street, and Kieran is one of the stars of the show. He plays Inspector Finn O'Hare. Uh, we're going to be showing a full 35-minute clip of the first episode of Hope Street. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the show, Hope Street is running in about two dozen public television stations now on broadcast, and it's also available on PBS Passport. This is a charming drama, 10-part uh, series that uh, we're very excited about here in American Public Television. There's a long history at APT of offering dramas like Midsummer Murders, Ballet Kiss Angel, Doc Martin, and we see Hope Street as one of the next great programs. Most of all, we want you to know that we're here in your honor. It's member dollars that make dramas possible. So your support has helped bring Hope Street to America and public television. So we can't thank you enough. And we, we think uh, you're going to have a lot of fun today. So we're going to show the first 35 minutes of episode one of Hope Street, and then Paul and Kieran are going to join me for some Q&A. Uh, so think about some questions that you'd like to submit, and we're going to try to get to them uh, after the clip. So it's a pleasure to be here with you. So let's take a look now at the first 35 minutes of Hope Street, and we'll be back with Paul and Kieran uh, to have a discussion. So thanks for coming today, and here's Hope Street. Enjoy. What brings you to Port Divine? It's pretty complicated. When Layla Hussein comes to this Northern Ireland town. Is this the new lady detective then? She'll need to learn quickly. We've got slightly different rules over here. The new crime drama. Put the gun down now! With a big heart. Oh, I see you. Trying very hard not to care. I would like to stay. Yeah, I'd like that too. Emotions are running high. Hope Street. There you have it. There's a little taste of Hope Street for you. A reminder that it is available on PBS Passport for you to binge and watch anytime. So uh, we hope you uh, enjoyed this taste. There are 10 episodes in the first season of Hope Street. Uh, check your local listings for when it could air on, on your broadcast station. Look for it anytime on PBS Passport. It is currently airing on over two dozen public television stations around the country. And if it's not airing in your market, reach out to your local station about Hope Street. Another reminder if for Q&A, if you go to the chat portion of Zoom, we're going to be looking at your questions. So if there's anything you want to ask Paul or Kieran, please feel free to jump in. Uh, they're anxious to hear from you. Um, I want to start by introducing uh, Paul and Kieran and welcoming them to the panel. Uh, Paul is the co-creator, writer, and executive producer of Hope Street. And his previous credits include long-running drama series in the UK, including Footballers' Wives, Holly, Holly Oaks, and The Bill. Uh, <laughs> Kieran McMiniman may look familiar to you. He's an actor. And he's also the author of two novels. Uh, for those of you who are fans of British drama on public television, you know him from some ser such series as Agatha Christie's Miss Marple, David Copperfield, Inspector Lewis on Masterpiece, he's been on Death in Paradise, and American Public Television's very own Midsummer Murders. So we're thrilled to have you both here. Thank you for taking the time on your Sunday to come and join us. We really appreciate it. Pleasure. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm going to start with Paul. Uh, Paul, Hope Street's a very personal production for you. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what it meant to film this series in Northern Ireland and tell a story about that part of the world that viewers don't often get to see? Well, it's personal for me because I was born and bred in Belfast, but left when I was 18 to go to university in England because I wanted to work in, I thought I wanted to work in theatre. I didn't know people that make it work in television. Um, and... I've worked in television now for a, a long time, three decades or something, and I've been trying for many, many years to sell a show set in Northern Ireland. And I wanted to, you know, there's there's been quite a lot of drama made in Northern Ireland, which has either been Game of Thrones, a lot of Game of Thrones made in Northern Ireland. Clearly, it's not set there. <laughs> it's set somewhere quite different. Um, or there's been quite a lot of drama, which has been about the Troubles or about murders. The, the Fall was, was made in Northern Ireland, but it's very dark. And I was really keen to make a show that, that as, as everybody's just seen, I, I hope, gives a different view of Northern Ireland. I mean, Northern Irish people have had a hard time, but they're really funny and they're really warm and they're, they've got a great sense of humour. And so 
my pitch to the BBC and to BritBox was um, a crime of the week show uh, set in a really, really beautiful part of Northern Ireland with a cast of characters that you'd that you'd fall in love with and, and want to come and see again. And, the, and then every week we'd solve a crime, a little bit like Doc Martin, a little bit of Jessica Fletcher in there in terms of, you know, it's not quite Cabot Cove. God, I love Cabot Cove. Um, and so it, it about three years ago, we found the right writer in, in Susie Farrell, who's a, a, a movie writer, really. Um, and we went to the BBC, we went to talk to um, BritBox, and suddenly it felt like the moment was right and everybody said yes. So it had been, for me, it had been sort of 25 years in the making, really. Um, and, uh, you know, when I was 18, to, to work in theatre and television, I had to leave Northern Ireland. It was in the middle of the Troubles. Things were not great. Um, and our hope with, with, with Hope Street behind the scenes is that it will be a show where someone can walk in as a as a runner doing a really, really basic job and end up being the producer and not have to leave Northern Ireland to, to make popular TV drama that's seen all over the world. Um, and touch wood, um, we've just um, wrapped and finished post-production on the second series and we're writing the third series. So it feels like um, that seems to be working. Fantastic. Well, congratulations on the success. Uh, we know it's been well received uh, over in the UK and Ireland and we're, we're thrilled that the series is gonna continue. Uh, Kieran, you were born and raised in Northern Ireland. You worked in the theater in Ulster, and now you have a chance to come home and play Inspector Finn O'Hare. What has the experience of filming a series like Hope Street meant for you? It's been incredible. I mean, a lot of my answer would be similar to Paul's. I, I felt I had to leave home to chase a dream that I didn't feel I could really chase in Northern Ireland in the 90s, and things have completely changed now, you know. Um, there's a, there's a full-on industry there. There's uh, there's amazing crews. There's loads of actors that are great actors living at home. All the actors used to live in London and travel home to do stuff. Um, and that's a similar thing. It's like anything, you know, I've done a lot of work, a lot of international work, a lot of English work. And anything usually traditionally that came up about home was about the stuff that people at home have heard enough of, <laughs> you know, and all the bad stuff, all the, all the death and, you know, stuff that we do need to acknowledge and we can't obviously wipe under the table but we're a very warm funny intelligent bunch in Northern Ireland and you know we've got more in common with ourselves than we have with anybody else so to see something finally set at home that is is more sort of day-to-day -day who we are I, I picked the scripts up started reading them and as I've said to Paul many times was just instantly charmed I was like this this is exactly what I would like to go home and do go home and watch something set at home that shows who we are and that people can watch and enjoy without getting, you know, upset or stressed out because it's 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 entertainment and then um, and, and I think it does it very well. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Kieran. Uh, just a reminder to send in your questions in, in the chat and we'll try to get to them. Uh, Paul, can you talk a little bit about the two characters of Barry and Concepta? We got to see them and sort of see a little bit of the sort of love-hate be between the two characters and uh, it seemed like there was a special reason for having those two figures in the show. Well, yes. Um, when we, when I sat down with Susie, who's you know who wrote the first episode, and we talked about you know what the show would be and where it'd be set and how it would feel, and we, and we had a really long conversation over three days about what do we do about the troubles, what do we do about the terrible past? Could we really ignore it? And then I, I don't know whose idea it was. But, I, but what we came up with was to embody the two sides of the struggle in these in these well, I mean, these brilliant characters. I mean, they're, we were so lucky to get Breed and Des to play them. They are fantastic actors. Um, and essentially, they're very funny and warm. Um, but they they sort of typify the, the two, because people in Northern Ireland talk about the, the two traditions and I really like that, and you know that, that that there's something about the word tradition which just talks about the past, isn't it? It's all about the past. So, um, you know, she is very, you know, Republican, and I'm sure that she would definitely want to be United Ireland. And um, and he used to be an inspector in the Royal Ulster Constabulary, Constabulary, I can say it, which is um, the RUC was the police force before the Good Friday Agreement. Um, so it was there were a lot more 
Protestants in that piece for worse than Catholics. I really don't want to get into the nitty gritty of this because the point of those two characters is that we don't get into the nitty gritty. They are from different sides of the divide, um, but actually they really love each other. And all the, you know, all the arguing and the sniping each other, um, it, it's, it's all a way of coping with how they feel about each other. They've been neighbours for 40 years. And what you see as, as series one and series two developers they would do anything for each other absolutely anything and actually there's a i've just been watching there's a fantastic scene towards the end of, and then end of series two where barry's been injured and conservative comes to see him and it, it will if it doesn't make you cry uh, then you're made of stone um so you know it, it, it it's the the response to those characters in northern Ireland has been really interesting people love them and they get it as well the audience all that and get it straight away that there is the troubles but we're not quite playing it for laughs. That you know, we, we'd never get away with that. But actually, we've we've humanised it, and 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 what we're saying is, those two characters have got far more in common than divides them. You know, whatever they think. Oh, fantastic, thanks, uh, Kieran. Uh, we saw in in this episode your your character uh, being not just a police working for the police force, but also being a dad. And you recently became a father. Congratulations. Can you talk about how you? different it was taking on this role now now that you've become a parent yeah it was amazing because you know i've played parents a million times and you just it's it's one it's one aspect of acting that you always feel like you're cheating you know you want you want to bring some emotional reality can you know, from your own life to everything you do to give it a sort of grounding of reality and if if you have never felt that unconditional bond between you and your child you are making it up. And then I get thrust into this show and my kids are putting me through the meat grinder every episode and they're in trouble or they're in danger and I'm there to look after them. And yeah, there's a there's a, a, a very strong storyline in a later episode in, in series one with my daughter, which, wow, there wasn't much acting required at all. You know, it was it was a very, very emotional experience. And, um, and the, the two... Uh, the two young actors who play who play my children are brilliant. They're both now in grown up professional drama college. They're going to go on to be fantastic actors, but they're just great to work with. And that sense of family that we've got in there, uh, you really feel that on the ground. You know that the, the the cast really work well together. The team in the police station is is the same. You know, there's a real bond between me and Kerry and Niall and everyone, and it's just it really I think it really comes across on screen because you've got these people that finish each other's sentences off camera and have their lunch together and go to the bar together etc and, and I think when you get that camaraderie it really shows on camera. Fantastic yeah, so thanks. Uh, we have a question from Bernilda. Uh, she uh, has really enjoyed watching the series. She thinks it's a great opportunity to become familiar with a, how different Northern Ireland is which most Americans unfortunately don't know much about. Uh, but uh, it's a charming seaside town. We have a new detective. She brings up Broadchurch. Uh, how would you propose to make this show different than what American viewers have seen with David Tennant and Broadchurch? Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot lighter than Broadchurch, I have to say. And uh, I don't know if we've got to season two or three of Broad Broadchurch. A lot less complicated. Um, I mean, our, our show, we, we want to leave you feeling good. At, at the end of the episode, we want you to feel that things have been resolved. Essentially, I tell you the big difference. Essentially, what Hope Street does is every episode there is a crime or a puzzle or a problem, and the people in Port Divine they they overcome their differences to solve that problem. It's you know it's called Hope Street, and it's meant to be really really positive. Um, and actually, Layla is there in many ways in the first series. I mean, I, I don't know how much people have seen, but in the first series, to to, to hold the audience's hand, she's an outsider. It's a it's a very old established dramatic trick. I wouldn't apologise for it because it really works. But she is she is holding our hands as we she's asking the questions that we'd ask. Who are these people? They're all a bit crazy. They all know each other. I'm an outsider. Um, and then she becomes you know sucked into the port divine is sucked into the community and 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 she begins to see the value in it and she begins to feel the love basically so um yeah I mean, i'm a big fan of the first series of broad church but wow it was hard it was it was a, it, it, it didn't make me feel that uh that human nature was particularly positive or wonderful um and i and i think that's what our show is about really it's a you know we are we are hopeful and upbeat that's, that's our best 
yeah, I got that same feeling having watched the first season. So uh, yeah. th thank, thank you, Paul. Uh, Karen, can you talk a little bit about working with this cast? Uh, it seems like there's wonderful chemistry between all the actors. How has that experience been like? It's been brilliant. I mean, I've worked with some of them before. I believe this is the third time Breach Brennan has been my mum, for example. <laughs> um, uh, Des, uh, who plays Barry, was in my first ever professional job and kind of looked after me on a film we did with Julie Walters many years ago, 20 odd years ago. And Des literally took me under his wing. And then, you know, 20 years later, you're here and you're working together. So that, that aspect of it and the fact that it's at home and the, the sense of coming back full circle in your life is really lovely. And then you throw young Niall into the mix, who's, he's like a wonderful find, you know, Niall's, an absolutely incredibly funny young man on camera. He's very subtle. We all love him. And he is the baby of the bunch. And he's the butt of all the jokes off camera. And he's great. And Kerry Quinn, who plays Marlene, is someone I've been aware of and wanting to work with for many years. Like, Kerry's theatre royalty and, and has done lots of great telly. But, I mean, I've seen Kerry on stage owning, owning auditoriums. You know, she's, she's an incredible powerhouse. So, um you throw all those people into the mix and everybody's at home and everybody's happy to be there. The other thing about this series, this season you guys are all watching now, it, it came hard on the back of COVID lockdown. Mm -hmm. So our, all of our lives, we'd all been shut up at home. We'd all had all the same as all you guys at home watching had, we all had our own versions of, of the horror and stress of all of that. And then we were sort of released into this little bubble. We couldn't really interact with the rest of the world because we were, we had very stringent rules. So we, we were sort of in this very odd little pocket together and it was our little world. And I think that gave it a real immediate energy. And then um, we were in this beautiful village out in the middle of nowhere outside of town. So there was a sense of us being in our own little world. And I think that helped us create our own little world on camera. Yeah, so thanks. Uh, question for you, Paul. Uh, we heard from er Eric who asked us, how different would this show be if it was set in Dublin as opposed to Northern Ireland? That's a really good question. It's interesting. When we were first pitching this show, particularly pitching it in the US, we had a, we had a brochure, like a document, and I'd put lots of photographs of Donegadi, which is where we shoot it. And in one of the meetings, someone who I shouldn't really name this, said, uh, so, where you, so where are you guys going to shoot it? And I said, well, there. They went, what do you mean? I said, that, these pictures, that is the place. And they said, oh, we thought you just, they were pictures of Southern Ireland. Uh, and so I said, no, no, that is, it. that's not kind of sort of, that's exactly where we're going to shoot it in Donegadi. So that was really interesting that, that, that there was a, a perception that Northern Ireland didn't look like that, that Northern Ireland wasn't gorgeous and beautiful and all the rest of it. So in, in some ways we wanted to say to the world, it's the same island, <laughs> you know? It's, there isn't a wall and everything's beautiful south of the wall and really ugly north of the wall. But it is different, I think. And I think there's something about the Northern Irish sense of humour that is quite caustic a little bit sarcastic. Um, it's that sort of sense of humour that you get in a family where I can be as mean as I like to my brothers and sisters, but don't you dare be mean to my brothers and sisters to me, and or I'll be really offended. Um, and I think, you know, that you might say that about everywhere, but there's something particularly Northern Irish about it. I think maybe it's born out of hard times. Um, so I think it does feel different. It is, as I say, it's slightly, I say it's slightly caustic. Um, that, you know, they all the characters are sort of rude and mean about each other, but they really, really love each other. And that's my experience of, of Northern Ireland. Um, because, you know, no, no matter what has happened, I always say about Northern Ireland, it doesn't matter who you are. If you are in trouble, people in, will, in the Northern Ireland will cross the road and help you. They will. That's absolutely true. And it doesn't matter who you are, or which side you're from or any of that nonsense. So I don't know. I think it's, you know, Northern Ireland is... Is a peculiar mixture of the Irish and the and the Scottish, really. An awful lot of Scottish people end up in Northern Ireland. It is a it has a peculiar flavour, it has a peculiar accent, and I think it's got a very sort of peculiar, it's got a very particular um, sense of humour and attitude. Thanks. Thank you. And 
Kieran, a question uh, for you. We, we just have a little bit of time left. Uh, what has the audience reaction been in the UK and Ireland uh, to your character? And, and ha have you received uh, much uh, from, from the community ab about taking on this role? Yeah, absolutely. In both, I mean, I, I'm obviously I live in London. Well, not obviously. I'm letting you know now. I live in London. <laughs> obviously, I'm from in, I'm Northern Ireland. We go home to shoot the show. Um, I was just saying to Paul the other day, actually, that um, the reaction I've had for this show at home has been unlike anything else. For a lot of the stuff we've been we've been discussing tonight, but people people just love it at home because it's something about themselves that's on TV that they can relate to that makes them smile and it isn't uh, heavy and they love it, you know? So I get a lot of, I've had a lot of letters. I had a letter the other day from one of my mum's best friends who her husband was a policeman in Northern Ireland. And she said it was the first time she felt they were sort of genuinely humanized. And we've seen the sort of lighter side of them and we've seen them as people as opposed to one people who are just in one side of a conflict. So there's a real sort of, for want of a better word, a sort of gratefulness for the show at home. I think people are grateful for it. They're like, this is a, this is kind of what we've been looking forward to. Because uh, we talk about this all the time, you know, all the troubles are, it's been a long time now. It's about time we had some entertainment that reflects that, but it never really happens. So yeah, people love it. And in England, uh, you know, I got stopped in Sainsbury supermarket yesterday <laughs> by uh, uh, a coven of older ladies who absolutely <laughs> loved the show. They got up and left the coffee shop, and pulled me in for autographs, and they they absolutely love it. They love seeing a part of the UK that they haven't seen before in this context. They love the scenery. They love the characters. They love Barry and Concepta. Absolutely love them. And um, so yeah, it's it gets a really really warm reception across the board. Uh, that's terrific. Uh, and I want to thank Patricia. She sent in not a question, but a comment about how much she enjoys the show, how entertaining she finds it, and glad you've gone away from the darkness and, and into the light. So that's appreciated. Paul, I'd be remiss if, if I didn't ask you this in the few minutes we have left. Uh, I'm thrilled that you announced that there's a season two. It'll be available for public television stations uh, to start airing and, and available on Passport next summer. Um, and I know you, you said you're working on scripts for season three. Can you give us a little bit of a tease of, of what we might be expecting in the future in Hope Street and Port Divine? Well, I was thinking about that while we were watching it. It's very tricky. Um, <laughs> if people haven't seen series one, um, TV's Kermit Menemon, Finn O'Hare, is involved in a very serious cliffhanger at the end of series one. Um, and we don't know whether he's alive or dead, do we, Kieran? No. Um, yeah. But uh, so I, I can't tell you what happens to his character in, in season two. Um, we have a basically in season two, we bring in a, in a we have another copy turns bad. It's really good. It's really, really good. Um, and we have a big fat love triangle as well uh, in season two. But I can't I, I just can't tell you whether Kieran will be in it or not. So. <laughs> Maybe I'm playing my own ghost. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was worth a shot asking the question anyway. If I, he was in it, he would be brilliant. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hypothetically. Well, yeah. Well, we, we appreciate that. Uh, you know, in the first few months that the program has been available, uh, Hope Street has really connected with American audiences. And I have no doubt in the coming months, that's just going to continue to grow. So congratulations to both Paul and Kieran for bringing us such a wonderful Series, I want to thank them again for taking the time on their Sunday to come and have this conversation with us. And a reminder uh, that Hope Street is available uh, for uh, a number of stations on broadcast. Uh, so check your local listings and on PBS Passport. And if you're not finding it, reach out to your local station about it acquiring Hope Street. So thank you. And thank you for your support of public television. Like I said at the beginning, your member dollars make uh, Hope Street possible to air in the US. And we're greatly appreciated that. Uh, so thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day and um, have a great afternoon. Enjoy the show, guys. Enjoy the show. Thanks, Bye -bye. everybody.